with God's presence. We're going to get our word for a second, but I want to remind you, if you are interested in the school of ministry that's coming up in August, we're going to have an informational meeting next Sunday, immediately following second service. So this is just for you. It's an amazing thing, but if you have any questions, come and talk to us. Call, talk to Miss Lucy, my mom, and man, God is going to be moving. We're raising up an army, amen? Praise God. And uh, so anyway, God has been doing a lot of stuff here at Faith City. Man, the youth is growing, the youth group, the Bible study. God is doing great things. I'm telling you, we are going to see, and we are seeing right now glimpses, but we're about to see exponential growth and revival. Is anybody with me on that? And you are going to be right in the middle of it, inviting people, getting people saved, praying for people, giving, paying millions of dollars are going to flow through your hands. I want to get that, I want to get, I want to get that language in our, in our vocabulary. Millions, come on, somebody say millions of dollars will flow through my hands. That's the key. That's the key. That's the key. It's to be a pipeline because God's going to get it to you if you just let it flow through you. It's going to be plenty to you. I'm telling you, you are going to be right in the middle of it. And I prophesy that God can do it. He can raise up money. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And it's for, but I don't want just everybody else paying for what God's going to do. I want you to be blessed because that money will come. But I'm telling you, I want you to be blessed. Say millions of dollars will flow through my hands. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, let's, let's just uh, proclaim the word of God today. Pick up your Bible or your iPad or your phone, whatever you have your Bible on. <clears throat> and let's make a declaration of faith. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. And I have what it says I have. This morning I'll be taught the word of God. And I'll boldly confess. My mind is alert. Come on. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I have the grace of God to do the will of God. And I have the grace of God to do the Word of God. And I'll do it in Jesus' name. And all the God's people shouted, amen and amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Give somebody a pound around you and say, man, it's good to see you in church. Praise God. After the second service today, we have our water day, and uh, praise God, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. we got a lot of people that are just, uh, man, can't wait to come to that. But I just want to encourage you all this morning. we got um, just a couple minutes. Man, how many of you all enjoy the presence of God this morning? It was like a blanket. And I love that, that word that you brought, Pastor Lisa, that prophetic word of blanket of healing. And I'm telling you, it flows from the precious fountain. You ever heard of, there is a fountain that flows from deep within. Well, Jesus was flowing. That fountain was Jesus, okay? And it was flowing this morning. And the greatest way ever, let just know this, the greatest way ever to receive a healing is in the presence of the Lord. You have, we, 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 we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Bible tells us to do that. It tells us to have um, leaders pray over and elders pray over people. We do that. Um, we, we understand we, we stir each other's faith by doing it. We pray in the Holy Spirit. Um, like it says in the book of Jude, stirring ourselves up in the most holy faith. But I'm telling you, one of the most precious things to receive your healing is just through worship. Say, God, I love you. And you know, I have these needs, and I, I, have the, I need to be healed. Lord, I worship you now, and I thank you that you're my healer, and I just give you everything. I just lift up holy hands, and I'm telling you, God loves to inhabit the praise of his people, and sickness cannot dwell in his presence. Somebody say amen. Praise God. But we've been talking about the return of the king. How many of y'all know that he's coming soon? Amen. And uh, I got Pastor Lisa's uh, computer here, but it's tiny. Little bitty fun. So if you see me squinting there, I'm gonna be like, might get some binoculars. But our master text is, it has been, and still is, James chapter five, verse seven and eight. And if, if you could put it up there, if you know it, just just follow along with me. Why don't uh, Why don't you just read? Let's just all read this together out loud, okay? This is our anthem. This is why we're here, <clears throat> okay? Y'all ready? Verse seven. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold. 
the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on. Say hallelujah. Say I'm a harvester. I'm bringing in the harvest. I'm winning. Come on, say, say I'm winning souls. Come on, say, turn your neighbor, shake them a little bit, wake them up, say, I'm winning souls. I'm bringing people to church. I'm laying hands on the sick. Come on, say, I'm sharing my testimony. That's right, I love that. I'm sharing my testimony. I will proclaim the name of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Say that with me. I will proclaim the name of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Amen. Praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Man, that's good. So we've been, we've been reading that, that Jesus is going to bring the biggest harvest of souls. What does that mean? People coming to him, getting saved, acknowledging him as their Lord and Savior. The biggest harvest of souls ever known to the history of mankind will come before, right before he comes, the former and the latter rain. As a matter of fact, that's why Jesus said God is patient and waiting for that to happen. And he also said he prayed, therefore, that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers. Turn to your name and say, I'm a laborer. Come on, poke them a little bit and say, you're a laborer. Okay, that is not a demeaning term. That is not a derogatory term. That is simply a servant of Jesus Christ. Anybody a servant of Jesus? Listen, that's what we're about. That's why we, that's why we have a church here. Um, not just to fill a slot on Sunday. And not just so you go home and feel good. I mean, we want you to feel good. We want you to have peace. That's not why we're here. That's not why I said that's not why we're here. We're here so that we can be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And before he comes back, we bring in the end time harvest. Amen. So I just want to talk to you about a little bit this morning. I'm just going to go for a couple minutes because, man, God did a great thing in, in the, the worship and the singing. And so that's great. But I'm just going to talk for a few moments about eternity. Because somebody say eternity. There was a World War II veteran named Smokey. I don't know if any of y'all remember him from Huntsville. And he was a great guy. He's all, he went to be with the Lord. But he sang this song. He wrote this song. And uh, it just really just stuck to me. Like, I mean, it opened my eyes. It was a whole country twang. It was hilarious. I mean, but it was, it was powerful. And, and the way it went, the, the beginning of the, cur- the end of the chorus said, Because eternity is a mighty long time. <laughs> and I was like, man, just stop and think about that. Eternity is a mighty long time. I mean, 80 years. What's 80 years? If, you, if you're blessed, 100, the Bible promises 120, that's awesome. Uh, of good years, um, that's nothing. The Bible says that's just a wind. That's just a breath. That's just like a, not even a flake of grass that dries up and withers when the sun, the, the Texas heat comes 150 degrees. That Lisa loves that heat. And when it comes... And it withers that grass. And that's just like our life. It's just a breath and gone. Our God does not live in time. Matter of fact, he, he created time. He, cre- he created time. That does not make sense to our, our mind, our natural mind. But with our spirit mind, we can comprehend the things of God because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us teaching us and counseling us. But God does not live in time. When he said, let us make man in our image, when he said, let, uh, l- uh, let there be light, he, he literally started this thing called time, and he put man in the garden, okay? So he started, he put that, there will be a time after the judgment, the great white throne judgment. We're going to talk a little bit about that today and in the second service. But after that, God's going to fold everything up like a towel. I'm talking about the expanse of space. Somebody t- turn your name and say span, space. The cosmos. The, the everything. The just everything. The scientists, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's laughable how scientists talk about things they think are, are, are facts. And like, you know, this universe is such and such trillion, zillion years old. And, and we know exactly how. Man, I'm like, that, really? Oh, well, really? You know. And you were there to find that out. You, you know that. Now, everything, the more they find out, I promise you, the more it points to God is true and, and the Bible is right. But don't just always take it. Oh, NASA said it. Google, Google said it. 
Google said that this was, you know, I'm, these are the dinosaurs of 50 trillion and million. I'm not saying some of those things may be right, but because Google said it does not mean that it's right. I read in the Bible, and I'm like, you know, everything that we find out actually just proves the word of God. And if something is different, then I just got to keep it in a light of, well, I don't understand it quite yet. I just, I just don't understand it quite yet, but the Bible is right. And so um, I just want to say that one day time will end. God will say, okay, that's it. That's it. So it's, it's it. Let's just come in. We will be, in, the Bible says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So and again, that's our comfort. Mary, not that he's coming quickly and then we'll ever be with the Lord. And so that's amazing. But there will be a, a day where time ends and eternity starts. Every spirit, every soul is an eternal being. That is why we must live for eternity. Every soul that has ever, that God has ever breathed a spirit into is eternal. But the Bible says that every man is appointed, uh, uh, every man will die, and then after that, they will have the judgment. So there is no purgatory. There's no paying, you know, for your relatives to get out of hell or there's no, you know, levels to do that or get closer. Whatever we do on earth, that's what we're going to be rewarded for or punished for. Uh, when we we throw ourselves, God does not send people to hell. But whenever if somebody does not accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he is not granted the privilege of standing uh, and proxy or standing as our lawyer and saying this one is with me. He does, not, he does not get that, and so they go and will have to give an account, and then they will be sent to an eternal fire, and according to the Bible. So I want to say that there will be a day when time as we know it ends, and eternity, eternity doesn't begin, it just it keeps on going. It keeps on going, and God is the Alpha and Omega. Somebody say the beginning and the end. And so there are, there are two judgments, and I just want to say that we've talked about the rapture. How many of y'all remember last week we talked about the rapture? Jesus is coming for his church. Somebody say for his church. And then the second coming of the Lord is when he's coming with his church. And somebody say, I'm, I'm with him. So I'm going to be with Jesus on that great day and, and that great and terrible day. I'm going to be with him, and then he's going to establish the millennial reign of Christ. And I'm not going to go into that a lot, but there will be a time where on this earth he establishes that. Then after that thousand years, then the great white throne judgment, which is the end. Somebody say the end. The world is very interested in the end. You know, we see signs of the times and everybody talks about the end. You know, maybe the cosmos is going to do this and the stars are going to. There will be a day and I, I don't know how God's going to do it, but it's just all going to end. <laughs> he's it's an analogy that folds it like a towel but he says that it will end and then we will step into eternity okay so i want to ask you what are we living for are we living for things that are eternal are we living for things that are temporal somebody say i'm living for the eternal so in the second service, I'm going to get a little bit more into the, the great white throne judgment and that's when jesus when, when god is going to judge the world and there will be no savior, be the lion, and there will be no savior, and they will be, they will, there will be no argument. Well, you know, no, 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 no. There'll be no, well, let me give you my side. There will be, did you know Jesus, period. And everybody that went to hell or, or, or on earth that didn't accept Jesus, they will come and they will be judged, and then they will be cast into the lake of fire, which eternally burns with fire and brimstone. That's not my opinion. That's not just a crazy sermon. That's actually the word of God that we will read. So that's the, sec that's the great white throne judgment. But I want to talk just a little bit about our eternity as a saint. Somebody say, I'm a saint. Uh, saints are not some, you know, a group of people that the Catholics, you know, said that they're just an elite group. The saints is somebody that has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and we're walking and we're following after him. We are saints. And so when Jesus comes back for us, we're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he's going to be giving out, um, he's going to be giving out crowns. And this is not something that, again, I've come up with, but this is something that the Word of God says. So this is what's going to happen, and I want you all to know this just for a couple of moments here. Um, 
Jesus is going to rapture his church, and then we are going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Somebody say, I'm going to be there. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to be there. Say, we're going to be there. Okay? Jesus said, um, you know, that I'm going to my father's house. There are many mansions. And I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures. Some of these you're just going to need to write down because there's so many. But I want you to have this in your repertoire. I want you to have this in your study. I want you to have this in your living room because I want you to dive into this. And these are things that are goals that we want because these are the things that God will reward. Now, listen, I'm not living for man's reward. Come on, look, look at, I'm not living for man's reward. I'm living for Jesus's reward. So if we're living for, if our life is spent, we want to spend our life to please Jesus and get the rewards in heaven, then we should know what he wants to reward. How many of y'all want to know what he said he would reward? Come on, lift your hand and say, I want to know. I want to know. Turn your name and say, I want to know. Well, there are different crowns that he will give out at the marriage supper of the Lamb. But what will happen at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Well, number one, Christians, I want everybody to know this. Christians, saints, will have to give an account for every idle word that comes out of our mouth. Matthew 12, 36. Write Matthew 12, 36 down. Read it, study it. No, 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 it's just grace. Just grace, just grace. I can just say whatever I want, do whatever I want. But and as long as I get to heaven, I don't ever have to, I'll never have to. You know, how I treated my wife, what I said to my sons, you know, how I did to this, how I didn't do, you know, use my words wisely. I could just, let's just, just grace, just God's grace covers everything. Well, yes, <clears throat> his grace does cover everything and he washes our sins, but we will have to give an account of how we spent our life. Did we fulfill the calling that he called? Did we go? Did we give? Did we love? And that's not like going to heaven or not going to heaven. That's Jesus saying, okay, um, I'm going to reward you for what you did, but I'm going to let you know that this was what I had for you if, if you didn't do that. So you'll know the calling that you had. And we will give an account according to Jesus Christ, our Savior, Matthew 12, 36. We will give an account of every idle word that comes out of our mouth. So, number one, if I want to live for the eternal and be, be rewarded, I need to make sure that I'm watching what comes out of my mouth. Is it blessing others? Is it lifting others up? Does it bring glory to God? Does it make God look good or does it make him look bad in other people's eyes? Somebody, you might say, well, you know, it doesn't matter. God's good, and no matter what I do, that doesn't affect God. No, but in somebody's eyes, whether they love God or turn to God or turn away from God might be how what comes out of your mouth as a Christian. And so I will give an account because God says, you remember you said that and you blew up that person, did all that? You were called to lead them to Christ and come, but they're in hell today. I don't want, that's giving an account of every idle word that comes out of your mouth. And so in that judgment day, which is the judgment of, of the saints, it will not be a heaven or hell judgment day. It will be me giving an account of what I did. Remember what Jesus said, you know, I gave the one five talents. He made five talents more. I gave the other two talents. Like he, he earned two talents more. I gave the one one talent. He's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm, just, I'm so scared because he's a terrible God and I'm afraid I'm going to hide it in my backyard. And God says, you slothful and lazy, no good, wicked servant. That's literally the terminology he said. He said, man, depart from me because you didn't even do. And so, um, and that's somebody that literally let their heart turn away from God, okay? But as a Christian, we, the concept is we are called to use what we have, our words, and bless others. And we're going to give an account of how we use our words. So also at the, the judge, this is called the judgment seat of Christ where the saints are judged. Uh, before the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus will give us mansions. John 14, 1 through 3. Y'all know John 14, 1 through 3. Um, let not your heart be troubled. Um, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. If Jesus said there are many mansions, listen, there are many mansions. <laughs> Amen. Somebody say mansions. Not cabins, not, not trailers, not a tent. Jesus, out of his mouth, he said mansions, mansiones, okay? Big, beautiful houses. And so he will be awarding, um, awarding us those things, and that will, that will happen. This is in eternity. 
Okay, this is out of the Bible. You can uh, read that in John 14, 1 through 3. Write that down. Um, Jesus, this is where, okay, this is the best part. This is where Jesus is going to say those two words, y'all. That we all are. This is when Jesus is going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful a little. I'll make you ruler over much. What are we going to be doing in heaven? Well, we're going to be celebrating, worshiping. We're also going to be ruling and reigning with Christ. And so this is when he actually will say those words where we get to hear, not just like billions of people and Jesus saying it over us. No, Jesus, well, he could do this quick. He's God. He can do something. Man, it's going to take forever. No, he, he can do this quick, and, and he is omniscient. He will speak to us, and he will look into our eyes, and we will give an account of everything that we've done, and then he will look into our eyes with those liquid pools of love, with tears of joy. This is what he's going to be looking at you and me, and he's going to say, well done. This is the time. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. That's what we live for. Are you living for the eternal? I want to live for things that will make Jesus say, well done. Matthew 25, 1 and 23. Write that down. Matthew 25, verse 21 and 23, when Jesus will say, well done. Everything else does not matter. Can y'all just say, this is the first crowd. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not a lot of fluff. I'm just laying it right out. Everything else does not matter. I'm not saying everything else is, you know, that whatever's not e eternal, like sports or whatever is, is sin. It can become sin if it's an idol, but it really doesn't matter unless you use it for God. It's just time filler, fluff. Um, and, I, you know, exercise, we want to make our bodies strong so and that's a holy thing is to to maintain the temple of the holy spirit but understand that if we're not using the temple our bible our body or using sports or using our business to glorify god and it's so that we can hear those words well done then we're wasting what god is giving us given us and so to hear those words well done we must use what god has given us for god to bring people closer to god Everything that is in my hands will be used to open people's eyes to the love of God and get people saved. There's not one thing. And listen, if I'm watching something and it's, it's getting me on TV or YouTube or whatever, and it's getting me farther away from God and it's brainwashing me or it's, it's you know, deteriorating my mind or it's, it's feeding my fleshly desires, anger, lust, bitterness, jealousy, gossip, all those things. If it's feeding that, then I need to cut it off because it's not, it's not, I'm not using my time and my mind for the eternal so that God can say, Jesus can say, well done. And so I, I want him to, to say that, Matthew 25, 21, and 23. You can write that down. Jesus will pass out five crowns to the saints. I'm going to say this, then I'm going to go. We're going to touch on this a little bit more in the second service as well. Jesus is going to pass out five crowns. These are things that he rewards. Again, if Jesus rewards, I need to, if this pleases Jesus enough to reward somebody, I want to know how to obtain these. I'm not trying to attain man's reward. I'm not trying to obtain a pat on the back, even though that's good. You know, a pat on the back's not bad, but that's not what I'm, I'm trying to obtain. I'm not living for anybody, you or anybody. I mean, I love everybody here, even my wife. I'm living for, for Jesus' approval. Now, if you approve me because I'm doing that, that means we're in covenant, y'all. That means we're covenant people and we're family. But if not, hey, Hey, I, I want Jesus to say, well done. I don't care if Facebook says, well done. I don't care if the government says, oh, well done. I don't care if anybody, if they say it, great, that's wonderful. Accomplishments, accolades, that's amazing. But I want my accolades in heaven. Not because I'm prideful, because I just, I want to please Jesus. How many of y'all want to please Jesus? How many of y'all want to please your Savior? How many want Jesus to say, well done? All right. Well, here's here's some things that he rewards real quick. There will be an incorruptible crown. First Peter four, nine. Again, I don't have time to go into all these uh, and read that, but write that down. First Peter four, nine. And then write down first Corinthians nine, verse 24 and 25. It talks about or verse 24. Yeah, through 25. It talks about an incorruptible crown. And basically, this is something that you are obedient to God's call on your life, your specific destiny. Everybody here has a specific destiny. 
there's a general there's a general will of God where we all you know need to be like God and have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, the fruits, love, joy, peace, and evangelize. That's everybody's destiny. But there's a specific calling on your life. You are called to go and do something, start something, um, certain relationships, ministries, churches, build orphanages, be a paymaster, um, you know, raise up children. There are certain things you are called to do specifically that no one else has that calling. Does everybody understand me? I want you to know that. Don't, don't put your destiny off on somebody else because their soul's in the balance. And if Jesus has to get somebody else, yeah, he, will, he will find some. But there may be souls that are waiting for salvation or waiting to be influenced that will fall and never get, um, never get reached because God is going to and we're wasting time. So I want to say that the incorruptible crown is a crown that Jesus will give, give us and say, you know what? You did what I asked you to do. Y'all see that? He's going to place a crown on your head. It's according to the Bible, not according to some philosophical, you know, parallelism, whatever. So it's, just, it's just in the word. So you can read it. And it's incorruptible. It's not moth eaten. Listen, it's not. Somebody say inflation. Say inflation. There's no inflation in heaven. Your hundred dollars doesn't do what it did last year, five years or a hundred years ago. Listen, three years ago, it, 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 my hundred dollars, my my, it only does what fifty dollars does now. Just three years ago, fifty dollars, maybe less. But in heaven, there's no there's no corruption, and with our crowns and with our rewards, there's no there's no inflation, there's no corruption. And so, if we do what God has called us to do with the talents that God has given us, He will give us. <clears throat> An incorruptible crown for obedience. I'll just call it the obedient crowd, crown. Just obedient. And it's not like, well, I did this big thing or did this big of a church or, I, you know, I gave this much money or I did. It's whatever you had to do, uh, whether it's raising those children or starting a business or just being, you know, faithful in a community. It's like God said, okay, you get the crown because you were obedient to the call that I had on your life. You're not, you're not supposed to chase somebody else's dream. You're supposed to chase your own that God's given you, and he will give you an incorruptible crown. So praise God. Y'all wrote 1 Peter 4 through 9 down. Did y'all write 1 Corinthians 9, 24, and 25 down? That's your homework. Go and study that out now. The second crown, real quick, is the crown of life, which is also known as the martyr's crown. And, uh, you know, it's not my prayer <laughs> that we get one of these crowns. Um, cause I want to keep on proclaiming, but you know what? It would be an honor and a privilege. It would be a great honor and a privilege to be killed for the cause of Christ. Many, many people, actually, there's many people every, every few seconds, there's somebody that dies for the cause of Christ on this globe. And the Bible says they will, they will get the crown of life, the martyr's crown, Revelations 2.10. Write that down. Revolutions. Revolutions. <laughs> Do you want a revolution? Whoop. Revelation 2.10, the martyr's crown or the crown of life. Write that down. The third crown is the crown of glory, also known as the elder's crown. Somebody that's gone and been super faithful and has led, um, led things and led ministries and led moves of God. First Peter 4. 5 verse 4 the elders crown and that is a faithfulness crown somebody say amen god will award those people uh, the fourth crown is the crown of righteousness somebody say righteous um also it talks about receiving a robe of righteousness there will be people that are all awarded robes of righteousness in heaven Jesus always didn't say, oh, no, everybody's just going to get the same award. It's just heaven is fair. It's heaven. No, no, listen. God's not a communist. Come on now. God's not socialism. He will award you and reward you according to your acts. Now, I'm not here to get political. I'm just saying that that's not heaven according to the Bible. He said he will reward you according to your own acts. The crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4, 8. This is all about, you read it. Uh, this is your homework. 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. Read it yourself. It talks about the crown of righteousness. And then also the robe of righteousness that you will wear. And it's not just like, oh, that's a cool jacket. That's cool. No, no. Jesus Christ is going to put it on me and say, son, woo, thank you. 
and clothe me. And it's not because of my how good I am. It's because I came to him and I asked for forgiveness. And he helps me with my infirmities. And I, I take his hand. And like Peter, when I sink, I get back up. That is his righteousness. Not being perfect. It's about coming to the throne and letting him wash our sins so that we can walk uprightly and just. He's going to reward that called the robe of righteousness, also the crown of righteousness. And I declare in Jesus' name, every one of y'all are going to have that. How do you get that? You, you, you just do what the Bible says, and you, and you ask God to forgive you of your sins. And every time you mess up, you get right back up and go straight back to God, and he helps you. That's how you do that. And the last one is the soul winner's crown. This is my favorite one. I don't know. I love all of them, y'all. But I'm telling you, man, the soul winner's crown. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Y'all, are y'all getting this? Please write this thing down. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20. Um, the Apostle Paul is talking about how he begat um, the Thessalonians and, and you know, how they, they literally are as a crown to him. And it is an analogy, and it talks about in other times in the Bible that you will be rewarded. But God will literally give us, a, and it's called the crown of rejoicing, is the way the Holy Spirit gave it to, to Paul. But this is the soul winner's crown. Why is it called the crown of rejoicing? The Bible says every time a soul is saved, that all of heaven rejoices. I'm going to say that one more time. I don't know if you got it. The Bible says that every time it just one soul comes in the kingdom and declares Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that all of heaven, and, all, and there's a whole lot of people in heaven, are going to celebrate that soul. And so that's why it's called the crown of rejoicing. And I can literally see Jesus having a party, like Jesus dancing. He's like, you did it. You brought him. You didn't just live for yourself. You just weren't selfish. You didn't just, you know, I'm my four no more. No, but you brought people. You did what you're called. You prayed with people. And he's like so happy. Why would Jesus be so happy that you're a soul winner? Because he can foresee in the future to the, the second judgment, the great white throne judgment, and all those people that you prayed with to come into the kingdom or invited to church, and they got saved and they lived for God. They, he could see that if you hadn't, then he would have to judge them and send them to the eternal lake of fire. And so that's why he's rejoicing. And he said, man, you bring joy to my soul. Richard, you bring joy to my soul. Isaac, you bring joy to Miss Kira. You bring joy to my soul. Leslie, you bring joy to my soul. Miss Kathy, you bring joy to my soul. Eric, you bring joy. Portia, you bring joy to my soul. Faith City Church, you bring joy to my soul, and he will be rejoicing. I believe. I believe it's called the crown of rejoicing because Jesus, nothing makes him happier. Nothing blesses his heart more. Nothing brings more joy to him than a soul saved. He said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's powerful. So the last crown that I say, and I end with this, is the, the soul winner's crown or the crown of rejoicing, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 19 through 20. There's many other references to these, but this is just some. I, I, I challenge you to read that, or you could go back on YouTube and get these again. But read these for yourself, because these are our goals. Anybody, you know, you, you see people posting goals, relationship goals, you know, uh, physical goals, muscle goals. Those are all cool, but listen, this is the real goals. I said, this is the real goals, the incorruptible crown of obedience, the crown, the martyr's crown, the crown of glory or the elder's crown, the crown of righteousness and the robe of righteousness, the soul winner's crown. This is my goals. The well done, which sums all of it up. That's the goal. That's the goal. I'm going to just read this and then want to end for 2 Corinthians 5. 9 through 10 again. And uh, man, there's so much more, but the second service is going to dive into this. Uh, but I want to read the 2 Corinthians 5, 9 through 10. It says, wherefore we labor. Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this in, uh, in a, I think there's NIV here. Where, uh, Therefore, we make it our aim. Whether present or absent, we will be pleasing to him. 
For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So I want to make it my aim to be pleasing to him. Close your eyes and let's, let's end here. Father God, we just worship you this morning. We thank you that you are our God. You are our King. And, and Lord, we, we love to have fun. We love to have recreation and all these things, Lord. But may we never do anything without you in the middle of it. Without just thinking, hey, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Father, may we never live life without, ta- without having you come along. You're there anyway, and the Holy Spirit's in us. But may we recognize you and call upon the name of the Lord at all times. May we know and submit to you at all times so that we just may be pleasing. Lord God, I, you know. I thank you that there will be crowns and thank you for these things, Lord. But all of that is not the the real thing for us, Jesus. It's just we want to please you. And so if it's if it's pleasing to you to give us a crown, I want a crown. If if it makes you smile to put that crown on top of my head, Lord, I want the crown. Because I just want to be pleasing to you. And I want to be able to toss it at your feet and say, ha, you're worthy of it all. I use my life for you. Here it is. We love you and we dedicate our life fresh and anew in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Pastor Lisa, you want to come up here? Let's just pray a quick prayer. Lord, everybody bow your head. If you never said this prayer, if you've never made Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, today's the day. Maybe you're watching online. Just say this after me. Say, Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus, come into my heart. Please forgive me of my sins. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. In Jesus' mighty name and all of God's children said, amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap and clap of praise, Pastor Lisa. We can can all stand to our feet. Um, That was a phenomenal message. Wow, that was so good. How many of y'all got some crowns in heaven? Somebody else said, I haven't done nothing for Jesus. That's okay. You can start today. Jesus is going to have a whole <laughs> section of crowns just for Faith City. It's going to be like, oh, no, hold on. I got a whole section. That's it. That is, uh, that is it. So this is so amazing. Such a powerful message. Let us pray real quick. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, God. Father, everything that we do may to be pleasing to your sight, Lord. It will be pleasing to you, God. Father, we just... We, we devoted our lives to you, God. We devote our lives to you, Father. Have your way in our lives. Do as you want, Lord. We are here, Father, to help be your hands and your feet and your voice, Lord. And I pray over every person here, God, that, that they will have even a more stirring, a more awareness, and a more of a alertness that we're here for your purpose. And, Father, we just pray over every person, God, that they'll get stronger in you, God. They'll be kingdom-minded. They'll think the things of yours that you'll they'll prioritize on your things, Father. So thank you, Lord, for this word. Father, we pray over every person that is here, Lord. We ask you to bless in spirit, soul, and body as they go home and, and they're they're going to their workplace, that they'll be shine the light that, that is within them, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed week. We'll see you second service, if not Wednesday. Have a blessed week. Hello, hello, I am Let the light